What's going on guys? This is Joe and I am back once again to open my personal favorite piece of sealed product that Magic currently produces and that is a pre-release pack. More specifically this is going to be a Rivals of Ixalan pre-release pack opening. I've started it a little bit here. I'm going to rip into it for all of you to look at. Come on now. There we go. Okay. We'll remove the sleeve. We have this little container here. It has the blue D20 inside if you care. And more importantly, the thing that you, if you're watching this, presumably care about are the packs. And with those packs, get rid of the insert, we have our promo, which let's zoom in so everybody can see what we're working with here. Our promo today is a Hadana's Climb. Very interesting. Once again, let me make sure you guys can see it okay. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic because I don't really need to, but it is a flip card. Not all of the promos are, but this one is, and so if you flip it over, it becomes the Winged Temple of Araska, which is awesome. You get to see a little bit of the foiling pattern there, and on this side as well, Hadana's Climb. So that's pretty sweet, getting into the Golden City of Araska. I am going to start with the Ixalan packs first. It's the older set. It's the cards that we are more familiar with. We start with an Engrath slash Hijack art pack. Let's see what we have out of here. And if you guys are not familiar with how I've been doing pre-release kit openings, uh, I'm going to open the cards, I'm going to show them all to you, and then I'm going to cut and I'm going to make a deck, and I'm going to do a little deck tech for you, as the uh, title states of the video. So keep your eyes open for combos and things like that, uh, and let me know what you would do with these packs. So we have a March of the Drowned, Ryle, Shipwreck Looter, Ixali's Keeper, Whoops, a Hierophant's Chalice, which just doesn't want to stay on the pack, uh, so there you go. A Territorial Hammer Skull, which is great. A Dire Fleet Interloper, a Swashbuckling, Siren's Ruse, Unknown Shores, a Slice in Twain is our first uncommon, not so good. An Odapec Huntmaster is the second, that'll be good if we want to go Dinos. And a Dark Nourishment is the third for a sweet removal spell. But more importantly, our Rare or Mythic, hopefully leads us in a specific direction, is... Wow. That's, that sure is a direction. That can... That, that's great. Uh, with our Hadana's Climb, it kind of makes things a little bit difficult for different colors. But if I had to pick, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably pick Watley. That is so good. Anyway... Behind Watley, that's awesome, we have a Swamp and a Treasure Token. So, still, maybe you guys have different opinions. Maybe you think Hadana's Climb is better than Watley, and you have, you're have you entitled to that. I'm going to have to look through and see how I feel. We move on to a Fire Shrine Keeper pack. Plus, it depends on what the rest of the kit gives us. I mean, if we get a ton of blue-green stuff, but you think Watley's better, uh, it's going to kind of be a tough decision, but we shall see. We start with a Fathom Fleet Cutthroat. A Nest Robber, Shipwreck Looter, Commune with Dinosaurs, Jungle Delver, Ancient Brontodon, Tishana's Wayfinder, Prying Blade, A Headstrong Brute, Kinjali's Caller, Rigging Runner is the first uncommon, Verdant Rebirth is the second, and A Storm Fleet Spy is the third. The Rare or Mythic in this pack, the second and final Ixalan pack, is... A Daring Saboteur. This card is also pretty sweet. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know that I'd necessarily make it say that, oh, we're definitely in blue now, but this is a great card. I enjoy it. Behind that, an island and a vampire token. We are on to the Rivals packs. Let's see what direction Rivals of Ixalan pulls us in, if any. All right, we start with a Raptor Companion, a Spirewinder, Brazen Freebooter, Plummet, Recover, Jadecraft Artisan, a Luminous Bonds, very nice, Colossal Dreadmaw, Dark Inquiry, Soul of the Rapids, Blazing Hope is our first uncommon, a Ma 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 Wow, really? I'm sorry, guys. We have a Mausoleum Harpy. I know how to read, I promise. We have a Raging Regisar is our third uncommon. Interesting. Maybe we go um, Dinos here. And our Rare or Mythic is a Protean Raider. Once again, 
pretty sweet card. I don't know that it necessarily automatically puts us in a specific color combo, but still, Protean Raider's a sweet card. Behind it, a forest and an elemental token. We move on to the Brine Seer card. The Brine Storm, if you will. That's the nickname of it. I was trying to think of the real name. Nope, we're gonna go with Brine Storm. We have a Crashing Tide, Stampeding Horn Crest, Sun Sentinel, Sailor of Means, Plummet, Dusk Charger, Impale, nice removal, Snubhorn Sentry, Traveler's Amulet, Evolving Wilds, Legion Lieutenant is our first uncommon if we want to go Vampires, Arterial Flow is the second, speaking of Vampires, and a Storm Fleet Sprinter is the third, a uh, good gold card to go with our Protean Raider we opened earlier, and our Rare or Mythic is... A Dead Man's Chest. This definitely does not pull me, in particular, in a specific direction. This card's not that amazing. Behind Dead Man's Chest, just a mountain and a treasure token. We have two more packs left. Frill Death Spitter on the first. Let's see what we get. And this is... Our decisions are getting a little bit more difficult, actually. We have a Sun Collared Raptor to start. Moment of Triumph. Negate. Gorgeous Negate art. Jadecraft Artisan, Fathom Fleet Border, Squire's Devotion, Dead Eye Rig Hauler, Shatter, Gleaming Barrier, Exultant Sky Marcher, Thunder Herd Migration is the first uncommon, a Crested Herd Caller is the second, and a Famished Paladin is the third, and our Rare or Mythic is an Admiral's Order. Okay, this card's not amazing either. Once again, doesn't necessarily pull me in a direction, although we do have three rare or four rare or mythics with blue in them so far, so that's something. Behind Admiral's Order, an island and a treasure token. We have one pack left. It is the Moment of Craving pack with a vampire on it, and let's see what is in it, because Watley is the biggest bomb, I think, that we have opened so far, and even then... I'm not so sure. We'll have to see. We start with a Stampeding Horncrest, Sanguine Glorifier, a Spirewinder, Vampire Revenant, Guilt Grove Stalker, Cleansing Ray, Jungle Born Pioneer, Buccaneer's Bravado, a Grasping Scoundrel, Secrets of the Golden City, In Enter the Unknown is our first uncommon, a Sadistic Skymarcher, this card is awesome, is the second and a Deadeye Brawler is the third, another blue card, but this one uh, an uncommon. Interesting. A lot of gold cards uh, and a lot of different directions. Our last rare or mythic of the kit is going to be a flip card, apparently. But is it a flip gold card or is it a flip artifact? The artifact would make our lives a little bit easier. It is... A Golden Guardian. Like I said, Artifact would make our lives a little bit easier if we wanted to play it. It flips into the Gold Forge Garrison. So, we have some decisions to make. I will be back in just a second, by the way, if you care. Uh, the token was a Sapperling token. But I will be back in just a second with whatever deck it is that I decide to make. So this was a tough one, guys. I will not lie to you. Uh, we had some interesting cards that we opened. Obviously, you can see Watley down here at five. We have two Stampeding Horn Crests and a Crested Herd Collar. If you can't tell, I'm doing Dinos. I did put in the Kinjali's Collar along with the Odapek Huntmaster, which are up here at the top, uh, to try to lessen the cost of the Dinos, since these three are Dinos. We have the Colossal Dreadmaw as a Dino, and the Raging Registrar is a Dino as well. So hopefully we can cheapen those enough to make it worth our while. In terms of removal, we don't have a lot. We really don't. We have uh, the Moment of Triumph, which is a combat trick, but could be used to, to you know, scare some stuff up. We have Illuminous Bonds. The Squire's Devotion is a really good card. I like that a lot. Buccaneer's Bravado also works as a combat trick. Uh, what I'm happy about, though, is um, things like Commune with Dinosaurs and Traveler's Amulet and Thunder Herd Migration will help as mana fixing to deal with the fact that we're three colors, and with three pieces of fixing there, as well as this Evolving Wilds, which we'll put in in the land slot, I think that'll work out really nicely to take care of the fact that, you know, we are playing three colors. 
Now, my question, I usually like to leave you guys with a question at the end so that you guys can give me your opinions on stuff. First of all, I showed you the Evolving Wilds, so there's that. Uh, I chose to put in the Kinjali's Caller, the one drop that makes the dinos cheaper, over the Jadecraft Artisan, the second one, because I have one over here, and I was gonna put in a second one, but I didn't think I needed it. It is a four drop, it's a little expensive, so I put in the Kinjali's Caller instead. Let me know what you guys think of that substitution, if you would have done that. Also, I wanted to just show you that my blue was actually pretty sweet and I want your opinions on should I have tried to work blue in somehow. So, we had, in blue, Shipwreck Looter, at least notable things. Two Shipwreck Looters, two Spirewinders, a Stormfleet Spy, a Daring Saboteur that you guys saw, the Deadeye Rig Hauler, which bounces creatures, so with all these raid triggers, we could bounce creatures and get new raid triggers out of them. A Siren's Ruse, speaking of bouncing them, plus a lot of the ones that I showed you with the raid triggers are pirates, so we would also draw a card. The Deadeye Brawler, speaking of uh, pirate creatures, and the Hadana's Climb. So, let me know what you guys think. Uh, was I forcing dinos here? I might have been, but I thought with Watley, with the Golden Guardian, which could really go anywhere, the Raging Regisar, things like Territorial Hammer Skull, I thought these colors were good. I think we're a little light on removal, but our black wasn't really heavy with removal either. So this was the deck that I came up with, was three colored dinos. I think we had enough fixing to make it work. But now that you've seen my blue, was I foolish for not choosing blue at all? Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, and feel free to answer those questions that I pose to all of you. Thank you all so much for watching. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button when it pops up on the screen. It helps us out a lot, and you will find out when all these videos come out. Uh, we have paper magic openings like this every Monday, and we have story reviews with my fiance Amy and I every Thursday. We are on the way to Dominaria. Please stay tuned. We are looking very much forward to reviewing those stories with all of you and giving you our opinions on them. This has been another Magic Pack opening. I've been Joe, this is Geek For All, and as we always say in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.